Welcome to ES203 Electrical Systems Online. This lecture will be an introduction to the topic as well as an overview of the course. So the first thing I want to do is to describe actually what we will teach in this course. There are four units. The first one will be a physics foundation. The physics foundation will be an overview of some things that you should have learned in your physics course, including current, charge, power, voltage, energy, as well as the relationships for resistors and sources such as Ohm's law, ideal voltage, and current sources. Unit two will deal with methods of analysis, such as KCL, KBL, the node voltage method, mesh current method, Thevenin, and Norton equivalents. Unit three will deal with sinusoidal steady state analysis. So we will move from DC analysis to AC analysis, and this will be phasor analysis, which deals with complex numbers as well as some of the topics covered in Unit 2 with respect to node voltage, mesh current, Thevenin, and Norton. Finally, Unit 4 will be on AC power, instantaneous power, reactive power, and average power. After each unit, there will be a midterm exam. Okay, let's start Lecture 1-1. So why is it important for students who are not electrical engineers to study circuit analysis? Well, simply put, electricity is everywhere. So no matter whether you're a chemical engineer, a mechanical engineer, or a biomedical engineer, you have to have some understanding of electricity. Engineers design systems, and they design prototypes, and all of those typically are going to have to be powered. So you have to have some understanding of electricity to be able to either design that system to be powered or to communicate your needs to an electrical or a computer engineer. Even if you don't become an engineer, you have to understand something about electricity in order to remain safe and have respect for it. So that's what we're going to do in this course. We're going to have an overview of electricity and how it works. So first, let's start with the most basic electric circuit. It's a battery, a light switch, and a light bulb. Everyone has seen this in a common household or in a building. But in here, we don't represent these physical prototypes for circuits, but we actually use a model. That circuit model would have a voltage source for the battery, a switch to represent the light switch, and a resistor to represent the light bulb. There's also a ground on the circuit model so that we know the potential is with respect to that reference. So as previously described, let's look at some of these elements. This first one, is a voltage source. The second one is a resistor. The third one is ground. And then something we haven't talked about so far. What do you think this last one is? Well, it's a capacitor. Some other circuit elements you should have seen in your physics course would include an inductor, Something else you may not have seen in your physics course, but something we will discuss in here is called an op amp. And last, but certainly not least, is something you should see in your electronics class, which is a diode. So this is just a sampling of some of the many circuit elements that we will discuss this quarter. So simply, circuit analysis are the tools that we use in order to find out information about a circuit, such as voltage, current, power, or to design it to suit our needs, okay? One of the first things you should do is to review the international system of units and standard prefixes for powers of 10. At this time, you can take a break from the lecture and go and view the Jimmy Kimmel Live video on the Moodle course website and determine what type of electrical system that is and why does Jimmy have to jump in the air in order to shock the people? Hopefully you've been able to watch the video. So now let's talk about what's going on. First, we have a guy standing over here with his hair sticking up. And he's touching something we call a Van de Graaff generator. Let's say the Van de Graaff generator has a positive charge. Why do you think his hair is sticking up? Well, what's happening is his hair also has a charge. And since like charges repel, his hair is trying to get as far enough away from that positive charge as possible, which makes it stick up. And then over here on the other side, we have Jimmy Kimmel. He has the hat on. 
And every time Jimmy touches the guy, he gets a shock. Kind of like what happens when you walk across a carpet in socks and then go to touch a doorknob. The charge flows from you to the other door, to the doorknob or to Jimmy, and it causes that shock, which is very painful. So then the first thing that happens is Jimmy wants to charge someone else. So there's a woman standing here on the ground and he attempts to touch her to charge her. And at first it just does not work. And he, he's like becoming frustrated like, well, why can't I shock her the way I got shocked? So the science guy tells him, you have to jump up off the ground because when he's on the ground and the woman is also on the ground, they have the same potential energy. So there's no way to shock him. So once Jimmy jumps up off the ground, now the charge will want to flow from him to the woman in order to get to ground and she then becomes shocked. So this is a very basic example of electricity and a circuit model by using humans. So now another example that would help us with electric circuits is to use the DC circuit water analogy. This one proves to be very helpful in lab when we're describing to students how to measure current through an electrical circuit. So the first analogy is that the battery can be represented as a pump, a pump that takes the water from low pressure to high pressure, where the battery is a separation of high voltage and low voltage or a separation of charge. Current is like the flow rate of the water because current must flow through a circuit. So the way that we use this pipe analogy in lab is that you have to get the ammeter into the flow in order to measure the current. So you have to break the circuit. Then when the pipe constricts, we represent that as resistance because resistance restricts the flow of current. So the higher the resistance, the lower the current, or the more narrow the pipe, the more pressure and it restricts the flow of the current. Finally, the relationship between the current, the voltage and the resistance is Ohm's law or I equals V over R or in terms of the DC circuit water analogy, the flow rate is the ratio of the power pressure differential over the resistance. Finally, some things you should do to prepare for quiz one based upon this lecture is know the basic circuit elements such as voltage source, current source, resistor, ground, switch, etc. But you should also know standard multipliers. Engineers typically use these multipliers. For example, 0 0.001 amps would be written as one milliamp. I recommend that you actually put your calculator in engineering mode so that it's easier to convert between these types of units. For example, another one would be 10 comma 000 ohms, which we represent as 10 kilo ohms. I recommend, no, I highly encourage that on all of your assignments, you use these standard prefixes for powers of 10. Let's practice a couple of more before we move on. What about 0 0.000022 farads? We would represent this one as 22 microfarads. There are several, and I would ask that you review all of these to prepare for your first quiz, including nano, pico, giga, and mega. There are many more, but these are the basic ones that we use in class. Also, make sure you review the units for current, which are amperes, power, which is watts, energy, which is joules, voltage, which is volts, resistance, which is ohms, charge, which is coulombs. Notice that these are the units, but they also have symbols. The symbol for current is I. The symbol for power is P, and the symbol for energy is lowercase w. A lot of students mix, mix up power, which has units of watts, and energy, whose symbol is a w. Make sure you don't confuse those. Voltage is easy because the units are volts and the symbol is a V. 
Resistance, the symbol is R, and charge, the symbol is Q. This concludes lecture 1-1.